So I'm happy to be here to, to talk to you about what we're doing in, in the European Commission in terms of research and innovation policy, driving sustainable, healthy and inclusive food systems. So uh, my talk of today is going to take you through some of the highlights. So the European Green Deal and Farm to Food Strategy, the key role of research and innovation in enabling food system transformation, um, our work currently in Horizon 2020, uh, the Green Deal call that was uh, that recently closed, and the work we are um, doing to build up Horizon Europe, which is our next uh, research and innovation program. Um, so, firstly, just to set the policy context, so uh, we are now um, quite fortunate that we have, uh, uh, that there is much impetus now in Europe to towards a European Green Deal. Um, this is a new policy framing, these are new policy priorities of, of the Commission, which include a basket of actions, a basket of strategies from uh, clean energy all the way to uh, um, green financing, green projects, um, uh, looking at um, the circular e economy uh, to make Europe the first climate neutral continent. So one of these key strategies is the farm to fork strategy, which focuses on sustainable food systems. And, and there are others that are, of course, very relevant, such as the biodiversity uh, strategy and even the circular economy uh, strategy. So what does the farm to fork strategy aim to do? It's really a means to um, bring together, uh, let's say, member states, stakeholders towards transforming food systems for sustainability, health and inclusion. At the heart of it is really the sustainable development principles. So the need for economic sustainability, environmental sustainability and social sustainability. Um, key challenges include, for instance, uh, healthier diets in, to reduce the amount of obese and overweight people, improvements in animal welfare, um, improvements Thank in you. social rights for workers in the food system, and food affordability. Environmental aspects include tackling climate change, of course, protecting the environment, preserving biodiversity, reducing food losses and waste, and, and fostering really a circular bio-based economy. And of course, there's also the economic sustainability aspects, such as creating new business opportunities, fostering a just transition and fair incomes. Um, overall, the Farm to Fork strategy has a number of goals. The climate footprint is very much at it, its heart. Um, there is also an aspect that really brings in the, the international or global uh, ambitions um, that, that is present. There's uh, also, it also highlights um, the need to tap into new opportunities and really to build resilience across the whole system. Now, um, the farm to fork strategy has uh, quite a lot, it's, it's very, um, let's say, at strategic level, the, the, the objectives are, are very wide ranging. However, it does pick out specific targets that we need to achieve by, by 2030. And some of these are the following. So we see we will call for the reduction by half of the overall use and risk of chemical pesticides and to reduce the use by 50% of more hazardous pesticides. There's also targets to reduce nutrient losses by half while ensuring no further deterioration in soil fertility and also reducing the use of fertilizers by at least 20%. So these are ambitious goals. We're also uh, keen to reduce the sales of antimicrobials for farmed animals and agriculture. And there's also a target of up to 25% of organic agriculture in Europe. Um, so the farm to fork strategy contains a number, a total of 27 actions. So it's really a huge basket where, where there's many, many activities and actors busy to roll out um, uh, either new actions or upgrading existing actions. And just this is just an attempt to mention a few here. So there is, a, we are foreseeing revisions of existing legislations, for instance, on food contact materials, on date markings. There will be a new legislative framework for sustainable food systems uh, that is being built up and that's by 2023. There will be work or there has been work already on the European Code of Conduct for Responsible Business and Marketing. 
Uh, there's mandatory front of pack nutrition labeling to guide healthy choices or sustainable food labeling. And of course, there's EU um, level food waste reduction targets and much, much more. There's also a set of of what we call non-actions that are relevant to the farm to fork strategy. For instance, there is a strategy on, 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 um, on algae that isn't specifically within the context of the farm to fork strategy, but is, is very relevant. So there's so much activity taking place now um, that is relevant to food system transformation, not just for Europe, but also in the global context. So this brings me to the next point, which is our work on research and innovation policy. Um, so we launched an initiative called Food 2030. This is basically our research and innovation uh, policy framework that we've been built up since 2016. And this was really a first attempt to mobilize our own scientific communities and also other commission services to start talking about food system transformation and, and the fact that it was an urgent and complex issue that needed to be tackled. Um, so we did a lot of uh, consultation work, many events, we brought in many experts, and we, we, we built this, this vision up um, together. So the vision tries to um, highlight four priorities through which research and innovation policy could make uh, an important um, contribution. And the first of that was um, to move towards nutrition for sustainable and healthy diets, and that included or includes all aspects that relate to health, huh? also food safety. Another priority was to build up climate smart and environmentally food, sustainable food systems. Another one was circular and resource efficient food systems. And finally, innovation and empowerment of communities. And by communities, we mean um, neighborhoods, we mean um, regions, cities, towns, it could be rural areas but really um, focusing on, on places where people live and work, so the play-based aspect. And how are we going to, or how are we going to address these priorities, which needed to deliver co-benefits, really? Well, it was through different drivers, so th by promoting research breakthroughs, by promoting innovation and investment, open science, and of course, international cooperation within research and innovation. And that was our, that's how we set up our Food 2030 visioning. And, and then um, we, uh, as we were working towards the new framework program for research and innovation, which is called Horizon Europe, which just began, I'll, I'll say a little bit more about this later, we, we decided to focus on a number of areas. Um, and these are our 10 Food 2030 Pathways for Action that we released last October on the occasion of World Food Day. And all of them, why did we pick these? Because we felt that these were really leverage points where research and innovation could really deliver transformative change. Um, and I'll just read them out. Um, the first is urban food systems. Uh, the next um, is dietary shift and alternative proteins. We have a pathway on smart, personalized nutrition. Another one on the digital aspects of food that we call food and data. Another one that specifically focuses on transforming food systems in Africa, because we do have a high level policy dialogue with between the EU and the African Union. Um, we also have a pathway that deals with food waste and, and circularity, resource efficiency in food systems. Another pathway that is directed to blue food or food from oceans, from seas and oceans, um, because often this aspect is, is not sufficiently covered. Um, it is kind of embedded in, in many of the other uh, themes, but it really needs to, to be highlighted as an area. There's also work we're doing on the microbiomes of so food systems microbiomes that connects the microbiome from, from let's say farm to fork. And we have um, um, a pathway on food system science and, and governance because we feel that much, much innovation also has to be um, relevant to institutions, so institutional innovation, governance innovation to really help transform the system and these actors to work together, just as John Ingram mentioned. And uh, the last um, pathway is related to, to food safety and traceability. And all of these pathways, as I mentioned, they were also chosen because in 
in bringing them forward, we felt that they could all deliver on these four priorities. So all of them deliver a number of co-benefits to these four priorities that I mentioned, the inner circle there, the nutrition, the climate, the circularity, and the innovation for communities. And all of this fits within Horizon Europe because we are deploying this concept, we are deploying calls for proposals that um, are related to these 10 different pathways. And we not only are we deploying research and innovation calls for proposals, we're also working very closely with member states and with other actors, including the industry and civil society organizations, um, to really align uh, and leverage, uh, so align research and innovation agenda and leverage investment in, in these particular areas. Um, now I'm going to mention our latest uh, call. This is actually quite an impressive call. It's the we had a 1 billion euro call launched uh, related to the European Green Deal. Uh, it, the call closed in January um, of, of this year, and we're just now coming out of the evaluation process. And now within that uh, within that call, which was was quite ambitious because we were really looking to foster systemic solutions that would demonstrate tangible results and you know bring in citizens also. And within that context, uh, we had a farm to fork topic that uh, that actually got the largest number of proposals uh, and an outstanding a number of proposals. It was a topic that was uh, for 74 million. And there, uh, within that topic, there were four sub, six subtopics. So one was uh, basically all of them were demonstrators. So achieving climate neutral farms was one. Achieving climate neutral food businesses um, was another. Reducing the dependence on pesticides and, and reducing nutrient losses was another uh, uh, demonstrator. Then reducing the dependence on antimicrobials. Another one on food losses and waste. And finally, one on sustainable healthy diets. So we received 260 proposals um, for, this, for this topic. And the evaluations have, have just um, completed. And so we'll be, we'll be notifying the, the lucky winners, um, the successful um, proposers shortly. But it just so shows how much interest and how much need there is to really advance um, on these topics. So um, these projects will probably start uh, sometime before the end of this year. So a few words on Horizon Europe now, because Horizon Europe is the new um, research and innovation policy framework for the next seven years. So it began in 2021. In January of this year, it will continue on to 2027. This is setting up the, the Horizon Europe um, program is, is, a, is a lengthy uh, task. Um, there's many um, iterations with member states, with stakeholders. Um, there's a legal basis, there's an orientation document, a strategic work, a strategic plan and a work program. So th th there's, there's a, yeah, it's just to say that it's, it's quite a lengthy process to get us to where we're at today. Um, we are now about to launch our own work program very, very shortly within the next weeks. But before I go into that, I'm just going to mention that the structure of this Horizon Europe um, has three main pillars. The first one is really uh, pillar one and pillar three are more about bottom up um, initiatives. So there's the excellent science pillar, which is um, part of the Re European Research Council. So and it also includes European infrastructures and and fellowships that are, are related to the Maria Skolkowska Curry action. So these are bottom up in the sense that we give overarching areas that, that are of relevance and then proposers submit um, their, their research, um, which is purely evaluated on excellence. In pillar three, it's also bottom up, but it's, it's what we call, we've now launched the European Innovation Council. Um, there's also, um, the, the the need to, to use this 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 pillar to to foster innovation ecosystems and, and it's through it that we also um, program the work of the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. Then we have pillar two, which is where 
we address the, the global challenges uh, like health, culture, creativity, um, civil security for society, all the digital industry and space aspects, the climate, energy, and mobility. And finally, um, the area where, where I'm coming from, say, which is food, bioeconomy, natural resources, agriculture, and environment. And so it's, it's, it's there that I'm going to now drill into to tell you a bit what we're doing on, on food systems within that context. So that's uh, considered cluster six, and under cluster six, we have seven what we call intervention areas. Food system is one. And um, with this, with this um, image, uh, or this table rather, in, in light green, it's just to show that these, these 10 pathways that I mentioned before is what we're weaving into the food systems intervention area that will then yeah, be deployed through Horizon Europe uh, Cluster 6. So the other intervention areas consist of environmental observation, biodiversity and natural resources, agriculture, forestry and rural areas, seas, oceans and inland waters, bio-based innovations and systems of the EU bioeconomy, circular and circular systems. So uh, under food systems, we work very, very closely well with all of these other intervention areas but in, per in particular with the agriculture forestry and rural areas because it's that intervention area that is really looking into all the you know primary production related food system transformation work that needs to 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 get done also like agroecological approaches or regenerating soil or uh, reducing pesticides so we're working very very closely together on these issues um, back to our, our FU 2030 pathways, just to say that um, the approaches that we are deploying through the Horizon Europe program need to be systemic. This means they need to involve all the main actors across the whole food systems um, to identify and assess and develop um, strategies together. Um, and we are very much putting at the center of the research and innovation work place-based approaches to test, to demonstrate, to deploy, and to partner. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is that under Horizon Europe, we are uh, now fostering uh, larger partnerships uh, to kind of federate many of the initiatives that, have, that are already out there. Um, and we do foresee a candidate food systems partnership which is entitled Safe and Sustainable Food Systems for People, Planet and Climate, which should start in 2023. So the objective there is really to align and boost research and innovation investments uh, to transform food systems for co-benefits. That could be, of course, needs to be relevant with the farm to fork strategy and other Green Deal related um, priorities. Uh, the current convening platform is the European Commission's um, Standing Committee for Agricultural Research, uh, which has a food systems working group. Now, the, the Standing Committee for Agricultural Research brings together ministries from all over Europe um, that are programming research and innovation policy within their own countries. So we are really working very closely with the member states uh, on this partnership. And with this, in this respect, thematic stakeholder workshops and a co-design process has been ongoing and we will have further uh, workshops this year and we expect to launch uh, what we call a coordination and support action uh, shortly to, to further support the, the setup of, of, of this partnership. Another thing I'd like to, to mention uh, related to Horizon Europe is, is the concept of missions. These are um, can be equated to, it, it's the European Green Deal's um, uh, version of sending the man to the moon. So we have five uh, thematic missions that, that we, are, uh, we have been building up. And these, these go beyond research and innovation because they aim to also bring on board, um, explore synergies with other financing instruments and and see to which extent policy solutions can also be tweaked or found to, to really make large leaps forward. Uh, one of the missions is on adaptation to climate change, including societal transformation, which has quite a bit of re relevance also to food system transformation. 
There's one that um, is dealing with cancer, which also, I mean, all of these missions are, are really relevant to food systems in one way or another, because the cancer mission is also likely to have some elements within it that will explore, for instance, prevention uh, strategies. Um, we have a mission on healthy ocean seas and coastal waters, another one on climate neutral and smart city cities, and last but not least is one entitled soil health and food. Uh, caring for soil is caring for life. So much activity is going to be taking place around these issues um, in the next years in, in, in Europe. Um, a few key milestones and next steps um, since the beginning of this year. So I mentioned the Green Deal call that was launched in January and projects should be starting uh, before the end of this year um, in relation to those. We've recently launched a study uh, tender uh, on food systems investment gaps. So why is it that we're in, that in some countries we see much greater investments in research and innovation than others? And which parts of food systems um, can we invest more in, in in terms of research and innovation? How can we get better return on investments? So this is at the heart of this study that um, the outcome is expected in end 2021. We've recently launched um, an expert group, an EC high level expert group as a contribution to the UN Food System Summit that is really looking into how we can um, strengthen the global science policy interface um, to meet the ambitions that the summit will, will set forth. Um, and um, this group um, will be having, uh, so we're setting up an EC stakeholder dialogue on this global science policy interface on the 29th of April, so that's coming soon. Um, I hope that uh, that you'll all join us for, for that. Um, and then the, the outcome of this, of this expert group process will be presented during the um, summit's uh, science days in early July, and we expect to have some kind of consultation process throughout the summer um, to then um, explore op options um, for what this, let's say, renewed uh, or reinforced global science policy interface could be um, by, uh, by the end, uh, by mid, by May of next year. Um, we will be launching our first Horizon Europe calls shortly, anytime. Um, with respect to these, we will be having info days on the 25th to 28th of May. So if you're interested in any of the topics um, that, that we're setting forth, please do take part in the info days. Um, our Horizon Europe program is open to all countries. So uh, please, uh, please do uh, join us for that. We also have our flagship event coming up called R&I Days on the 23rd and 24th of June, where we have a session on food systems. And of course, there is the UN World Food System pre-summit and summit events uh, coming up and the Farm to Fork conference that will take place on 14th and 15th of October of, of this year. And we are joining forces for the first time with our colleagues in DG Agri and DG Santé to have a joint event on food systems uh, this year. So in summary, uh, the EU Farm to Fork strategy and Green Deal really sets a new ambition and it comes in at a very timely moment, if I can, um, you know, connecting this up to the UN Food Systems Summit, that uh, policymakers really do look at research and innovation policy to enable real food system change for co-benefits, and that the Commission is putting in place uh, EU funding and policies to support these kind of research innovation investments and, and communities therein. Um, I stop here, and with that, I'd like to thank you uh, for your attention.